How you doing? Uh, my name is Selma Jones. Michael Nixon. Brandon Barr. Rufia Chaudhry. Uh, we're the IQ team, Innovative Contestants. Um, this is our presentation uh, about wireless power transmission to the Section 80 tablet. A wireless uh, power Ever needed to use a device but had no charge? Ever had to sit next to the closest, if any, power outlet or run bulky long cables to make the device stay functional? What if you could charge a device without even being near an outlet? Well, the focus of our project came from the idea initially from uh, being able to place a tablet on a professor's door. Uh, the reason that that idea came about was the issue of a professor's schedule changing and um, him not being able to uh, change his schedule immediately because of the hard copy that's on his door. Uh, so the idea came about was well, he, he can change it uh, while he's away and instantly the change will be taking place on the front of his uh, door, which the student will come up, check the schedule and see where he's at and don't have the problem of uh, having to hunt him down. Um, um, the need that, that comes from putting the tablet on the door is uh, the need of how we're going to charge this tablet, how we're going to keep it charged, how we're going to keep the tablet charged um, for the period of time that students may need it. Uh, objectives for our project um, will be to design a method to and or charge the tablet. Um, we're, we want to power our device for a minimum of at least 12 hours. Office hours usually run from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., which is usually about a 12-hour ring. Uh, we want to avoid using any bulky wiring that may uh, hinder anyone from entering the door or exiting the door. We also uh, want to avoid using bulky wiring because it may cause uh, wire dysfunction. Uh, the wires may cause a short in the system, which will cause our tablet not to charge. Uh, we want to keep our area safe so that no one gets hurt entering, exiting with the wires or any uh, extension cords running through the door. And uh, it'll be uh, it'll be easy to maintain and replace. Okay, so the power method that we decided to use was solar charging. Um, there were a couple reasons why we chose that other others. Um, first of all, what we do is attach a solar panel to the tablet. Um, and that will be able to charge it. It's an inexpensive solution. Um, doesn't cost too much to keep one of those. Um, they're also very easy to maintain, replace, repair if necessary. Um, one of the benefits of this is that in, in most of the building, the hall lights are always on. So if the hall lights are always on, there's always a source of power for the solar panel. Um, and of course, with that, there's no wires running through doors, so there's less of a chance that something can malfunction due to being a pinched wire somewhere. The charging time, which is the 12 hours of charging, it means that the offices are usually open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and the tablets can hold charge on sleep mode during the downtimes. Okay, as we said before, like we don't want to use bulky wiring. Um, bulky wiring takes up space, takes, takes up a lot of space, uh, which you also um, um, also, it also uh, the fact of causing a lot of damage to the hardware. And the chances of increase with bulky wiring, um, and with the fact that it's not always accessible to power outlets in the building, depending on the professor's office. Uh, as I said in the previous slide, safety. Uh, we want to keep our door clear. We don't want any objects to limit our room entry. Uh, such as wiring from the inside or the outside, extension cords blocking the, uh, the entry or the exit caused by the tablet needing the charge. Uh, if wires do need to be present, they should, uh, they should remain near the hinges or within the door seams so they won't block the entry within people, block, uh, people entering the room. Um, and all device must be placed in an area where it will not be liquid damage. We don't want our, um, our tablet or our solar panel to be affected by liquid damage, which will cause our tablet not to charge and cause some malfunctions. Okay, so um, just a brief synopsis of our problem analysis. So the current technology we're going to use is called the Proxy 2D, 
resonant charging pad. Um, sometimes it's a fancy word for solar panel, in my opinion. Um, and you can kind of see what the specifications are on the particular de uh, device we're using. For the actual marketing requirements, we developed some engineering parts from there. Um, and here's just a couple of them. I mean, we really wanted to be able to be running all day. Um, that was one of the requirements. So these first two um, engineering requirements match that. Also, too, we wanted it to be a safe device, as um, Mike was saying earlier. So we don't have, we don't want cords running through nearby outlets or wires running through crevices. Also, too, uh, we wanted that tablet to be secure in place because we got the bit somebody came in and snatched it off the door. <laughs> but we also wanted it to be secure but be able to be charged at the same time. And also, too, uh, we wanted it to be easy to maintain and cheap to repair and maintain. So it needs to be something that's durable, that's not going to be in need of replacement soon. And also something that can be easily removed in case it needs to be repaired instead of something bolted to the door, etc. Okay. Um, this is our uh, block block diagram that we kind of sum up our di diagram of what we think about our, our uh, project. Uh, like you see, we just have you know, power in uh, and user control. User control, basically, the turning off the device on and off, the power in, basically, what the power is transmitting, transmitting to the tablet and the wire charging the power out. <coughs> and function, this is our simple fun functional block diagram for our particular project. Uh, within our summary, uh, wirelessly for our wirelessly charging device, we got uh, solar charging, uh, 12 hours of charging for the office hours, usually lasts within 12 hours. Uh, the tablet should be able to conserve power during its sleep mode, so therefore uh, we won't have to keep it charged throughout the day. And um, Again, we don't want any bulky wirings to clutter our door or clog interest, entry or uh, exit. And uh, we want to keep our project safe, so therefore we could have a take of way of displaying office hours. We're now open the floor for any questions. The amount of power that a tablet needs in order to maintain its charge, are you, do you know how much? 18 watts. 18 watts? Does that, so, is this the solar panel? It's, that's not a solar panel. That's actually just a little practice so we can you know, practice with uh, wiring oh, okay. with yeah. the solar panel. But uh, we definitely, uh, that's, not, that's definitely not a solar okay. panel. We're trying to look for something actually a little smaller than that. They can probably maybe uh, power okay. uh, the, uh, and we can actually sit on top of the tablet, wire on top of the tablet, mm -hmm. instead of having something big and bulky on our doorway also. Okay. Because I was thinking that, um, there's always lights on in the hallway, so that's actually right. not a bad approach. Uh, my only thing was, and I haven't done anything with solar power in a long time, but uh, the amount of charge that we get from solar panels, I, I don't know, would it be enough for to power the tablet or charge it? Uh, well, the power that we need for our tablet mm -hmm. is not, it's not a small amount or it's not a large amount, mm -hmm. so the power, the uh, the lights in the hallway should give off enough uh, power to charge our tablet with the um, solar panel that we'll have because it's only 18 watts. Okay. All right. And of course, as we develop the actual final product, we'll be able to see if we need to adjust the angle that the lights are hitting the panel. Mm -hmm. Maybe get more or less power depending on how much, but the panels we've looked at so far seem to be giving enough power. You say you charge it wirelessly. What do you mean by wireless charging? But you are still doing the wire from this to the tablet, right? So it's not wireless charging, right? Well, yeah, it's not. It's not really. Well, wirelessly, we mean like That's using, wise. yeah, using like cords, okay. or like running to the wall, That's extension right. cords. Okay. So not connected to yeah. out any outlet. Yeah. Right. yeah. The main concern okay. is that I can't run a wire from yeah. my yeah. outlet to the wall. So, yeah. so I think the reason you brought that up is. Because um, so MIT developed a way to literally wirelessly charge yeah. a device, so that's wireless charging where the device is not touching the source that's giving its power. Really power. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Right. So that's maybe you'll use a different technology. Mm -hmm. I think wireless, maybe cordless or something. What can USB? I mean, more questions. Yes. Uh, so, what type of tablet are you using? A 
ACES, ACES. Uh, um, the, uh, that model, the uh, model of the tablet. Transformer 300. Okay. okay. And you said the power requirements are 18 watts. Uh, what does that mean? Is that? Uh, f to charge the tablet, uh, it just needs uh, to be power. It just needs 18 watts to power the tablet. So usually we think of power in terms of like watt hours um, that it would take to like charge it 50 percent or charge it fully. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess I'm wondering how many, um, yeah, how many watt hours um, are needed. So because it depends on your charger how fast it's going to charge, right? Mm -hmm. And so your charger is rated to. Um, give a certain amount of power over a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I guess I'm asking you guys to fully identify um, how much charge you can get over a 12 hour uh, span you know, with this device. Um, additionally, so what Professor Effer was saying with the power capabilities of the solar panel, um, think you need to narrow that down um, very soon um, because you might run into some size constraints um, in terms of like how big of a panel you need in order to charge this device. Um, so I can give you a link to a solar panel that I purchased um, from Amazon that um, I use or I guess I used to use to plug into um, my car and it keeps your battery kind of topped off. Um, and you can just kind of take a look at the requirements of that. Um, but from a cost point of view, um, I think that was maybe about 60 bucks. Um, and that's not a lot of power. So that's another thing I want you guys to investigate. Um, uh, so I was wondering if there had ever been a solar powered tablet. Um, there is a um, a laptop that um, I can't remember who makes it. Let me remind myself to email you guys. Um, where it doesn't fully charge the um, the laptop, but it extends the battery life um, by like three or four hours. Um, I know Apple has a patent on it, but there's a another company who just recently, Samsung actually, has a laptop um, concept for that. So I want you guys to investigate that. And uh, in terms of the user control, is this handled remotely or is this something where you're pressing buttons on the device? Cool. Well, what, um, what can you um, can you repeat that? What exactly do you mean by user um, control? Whatever you guys meant by user Okay. Uh, well, on the uh, block diagram, we meant by user control was the uh, being able to uh, being able to shut, being, being able to disconnect the power, basically. Because uh, okay. uh, basically, our project mainly focused on de delivering power to the tablet. So, any point in time that we want to disconnect the power from the tablet, that's what I meant by user control. But okay. being, like I guess um, in this oh, case, sorry. taking out taking out the cord from the, uh, the charging port on the tablet. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so. This is not accessible in the hallway, I guess. So like a student can't come by and disconnect the, the cord. Mm -hmm. Just because. Correct. Yes. That's, that's How are you guys accomplishing that? Well, the way we're going to have the final product uh, mounted to the door itself, or the tablet at least, um, mm -hmm. the way it's going to be set up is to where any wires wouldn't be able to be just pulled out um, unless somebody opened up you know, the casing for the tablet and went ahead and did that. Um, it's not just going to be hanging out there, basically. So, what I say? The constraint, um, I'm going to take care of mounting the tablet and securing it and its cables. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I can, that's, that's going to be taken care of. Uh, the main concern was that there needs to be, an, you know, there's a wire that goes from their contraption into my little uh, housing because I don't want people to walk off with the tablet. Um, that's perfectly fine. Um, there should be some kind of, I'll, I'll be making some kind of enclosure 
uh, to keep the tablet from, uh, I, don't, I, won't, I wouldn't want anybody to be able to touch the buttons or anything, so that as they somebody walks up to it, the only thing they can do is literally interface with the screen, and that's it. Mm. But I'll, I, you know, I'll go to Lowe's and figure that out. The main thing was I just need I, it's going to run out of juice after a while, and I can't run a cord to it. I can't run a cord from inside my office to outside my office. Okay. But whatever they want to do for the door, to the door, I don't, I don't care. From a uh, feasibility point of view, or not feasibility, um, usefulness, um, I think that it would be better if the power part of it was done remotely. Um, so, um, for instance, if someone, if a professor is off at a conference, um, they still want their schedule to be on during business hours mm -hmm. and show that they're at the conference, mm -hmm. but then turn off to conserve power. So I want you guys to look at what's called um, Wake on Land, which is a way to remotely control the power settings for a tablet, a laptop, a computer, etc. cetera, um, through the internet. So I'll send you a Wikipedia page on that. <laughs> Wouldn't they automatically go to speed mode or low power mode? Actually, yeah. If, if yeah, I guess you could you could just schedule it as well, right? Yeah, that can happen on the. Yeah. You can do that on the tablet itself. Yeah, but I was thinking, I, I I'm literally thinking, like those um, sheets of paper we have on our office doors. Mm -hmm. I want to replace that. Mm -hmm. So, hey, gentlemen, uh, because of the uh, time constraints, we have one more thing that we like to do. We like to show y'all show y'all a demo uh, of our. Uh, one of the things that we're gonna be assisting us with our project. Uh, it's called the NMI Discovery Board. <coughs> now this device uh, is used kind of it's kind of like a built-in voltmeter, oscilloscope, um, and waveform generator. Uh, this is my our first time coming in contact with. Uh, and we're gonna do a little demonstration on what we can do and how we can use this particular device to I guess help us with our project. Um, we're going to simply show you that uh, um, uh, 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 we're going to simply show you that uh, there, there is some kind of voltage, some kind of waveform that will make the uh, LED pulse uh, do this particular device and program. size of the door, especially doors that have the window pane, mm -hmm. so the solar panel they use can't be any wider than that part, mm -hmm. and then also the angle of the solar mm -hmm. um, Yeah, that's why I was good. I told them, I don't, the voltage, they're going to have to do some voltage readings to see how much how much use can their particular, mm -hmm. the panel, whatever panel they choose, they're going to find out how much, well first find out how much does exactly how much does the tablet require to be powered enough to where it won't shut off. Because um, I don't know if, uh, I don't know 
you know how much you can look on the back of the chart and see how much it it puts out. That doesn't tell you, okay, it has to give at least this much for the battery not to drain out. Yeah. All right. With our uh, analog discovery, uh, we could use uh, we could use it as a voltmeter. We could use it as a skill, uh, uh, oscilloscope to uh, to get the wave the waveform of the signal that is being transmitted as we are charging our tablet. So therefore, we can check the voltage. We can check the uh, and all the power that goes along with it on our computer. Um, as you can see, we got something demonstrated here. Uh, we got it hooked up to the uh, uh, analog discovery. Uh, you can run power and you can ground it at the same time. So we created this little circuit here with a resistor and a uh, LED light. And as you change the frequency on it, it'll change the pulse of the light bulb. Wait, this is a For example, if we wanted to set it to 10 hertz, you would see that it's blinking at a rate of 10 hertz, which is. And of course, if I double it to 20 hertz, then you'll see the rate double. Well, if I actually put it to 20. Uh, mm, uh, this is a particular device that we're going to use to assist us in our project and our development, um, which is required by our course. Uh, so that's a demonstration that we have here for that. Well, so uh, how are you going to use this in the project? Well, uh, particularly, like, I was, when we all think, when we think about it um, and what we learned from it, being able to see the actual frequency, well, being able to see, like, man, being able to measure voltage, uh, apply a certain, um, apply a certain wave to the device. Um, and see the signal that's actually being outputted by the uh, solar power chart, uh, charging at the same time on the tablet. For example, for example, like these lights here, uh, if I would hook this up, up to that, I'll, I'll get some kind of uh, um, results within this program. Uh, you know, simple, simple as just looking it up to there. So, what you're saying is that you're going to measure the performance of the solar panel with that? Right. right. We'll be able to see not only how much power is coming from the solar panel, but also, too, if we look at it the right way, we'll be able to see how much um, power is being drawn from the tablet itself. And this, and this is just one of the methods that we're going into, you know, use. Like I said, this is one of the requirements that we have within our project to use is this particular board. So we're going to use this project for, I mean, we're going to use this particular device as much as possible, you know, for our project. So. Just kind of measuring instruments to see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we we have other instruments that we're going to use as well. Like I said, this is one of the requirements that we have to use this, so we're going to use, use this um, when dealing with this project. The other thing, I mean, the output of the solar panel may not be, you know, smooth enough to be go to the directly to the uh, tablet, so you need to have some kind of circuitry for the power conditioning to make it a smooth DC power. Okay. Otherwise, you know, if you have some spikes or anything, you're going to make cross damage. So that's something. Filtering you need to have a QDC out. Okay. 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 Okay.